Intimidation. And my name is Patricia Lukomampango. Uh, straight away into the Presidential Press Unit, uh, President Yori Kagutam Seveni has commended officers and men of the 2nd Division Infantry Headquarters for a job well done. The President made remarks while giving an opportunity lecture to the 2nd Infantry Division at Makenke Barracks in Mbarara City. The CIC advised the Division Commander, the UPDF, as well to prioritize regular training of soldiers to acquire necessary skills which will in turn give them confidence to perform their duties well. Once a soldier is trained well and gains confidence, General Seven is said, then you get them to group up of about three, then you combine elements to have a strong force that can defend any threat. On the challenges raised by the division commander, Major General Francis Takirwa included establishing a Kadogo Technical Training School, fencing of barracks, land and establishing a reserve brigade. President Museveni promised to handle them all because they are crucial issues. The defense, uh, the chief of defense forces, General Wilson Ambasu Mbadi, welcomed the commander in chief of the armed forces to the second division headquarters and thanked him for building the UPDF into a formidable force that is widely respected around the globe. But these days I'm very happy to come here peacefully without coming to. So don't be worried that I'm coming to attack you. The, when you are training, you are re, re, you should you should start with the individual soldier. The individual soldier must be confident. Must be a confident soldier. When we were in Mozambique, the, we used to call them. Acts individual, Indivi individual acts of a soldier. How to uh, disassemble the rifle, how to put it together, to, to, to uh, assemble uh, marksmanship, how to be a good marksman, uh, how to, uh, to kutambua, now to me a cover that's very crucial for a soldier to know because many of the of the, of the soldiers fear because they are ignorant they think that uh, when i was starting with my people in ruero they would fear sound so i said uh, i told them that uh, you people Now the M23 rebels Congolese. have made reports that they are backed up by the external forces and ethnicity in their mission. The M223 rebel spokesperson Major Willie Ngoma said this in uh, Bunagana town in Eastern DRC after the government forces attacked one of their bases. Congolese living in Goma are protesting against alleged reports that Rwanda is backrolling the M23 rebels of Tutsi origin against the Hutu living in Eastern DRC. The M23 rebel spokesperson, Major Willing Oma, says the M23 rebels are not influenced by anybody in their fight for justice and development in Eastern DRC. <laughs> Tukuna determination kabisa na hiyo maneno ajili Kongo inabidi itembee vizuri sana. Ngoma also revealed that their fight for justice and development is not financed by any external actors and reports of segregations are far fetched in their struggle for peace. Ah uh, timiza maneno tuliyo kubaliana. Hiyo ndio shida. Hapana shida haiko kwa kujipiga sisi. Wanajua tulisai again Na government ya Kongo, government ya Kongo itimizi hiyo haki umetu tulisai. Haiku kukue ya kupiga sisi ya MTCC, tunapiganisha amani, tunapenda watu wa vikubaishi mzuri ndani ya nchi yetu. As the East African Community Member States prepare to deploy the East African Standby Brigade to stabilize the volatile 
Eastern DRC, Major Ngoma appealed to the ESC heads of state to implement the 2014 agreement they agreed on. Watu waka pamoya waone hili shida nini. Sababu, sabu ni sayi agreement. Watu walikuwa sa, wa witness walikuwa pali. Iwe nilikuwa, hey you, sadik, uh, watu walikuwa, wanajua hiyo. Wale watu yote, haiko tu president Musebe ni president Kakami, wale watu yote wanajua hiyo, tulisign agreement. Major Ngoma revealed that the presence of Congolese in neighboring countries as refugees is a matter of concern that the Kinshasa-based government has failed to address to have her nationals return home. Despite the Congolese refugee question, Ngoma said the M23 rebel force is ready for peace talks with the Kinshasa-based government for the betterment of the people and economic transformation. <laughs> Tunapenda amani kuwe, maneno hii ya tribalism, ihishi ndani ya kongo. Wakamati yu argument, watimizi maneno ambayo tulio kubaliyama. Just, just, it's very simple, it's very simple. Kama au wanakuja kushambulia sisi, you must fight my sister. Atuwezi kamata tunafunga mkono. However, Major Ngoma condemned the government forces that ordered people to protest in Goma. Kama viongozi ya inchi, wanaanza sema na watu, wakamate mpango, wakamate kisu, wauwe watu ingini sababu puwa yabu yuko murefu, sababu awana morphology, sawe ingini. Iyo njo shida kabisa siyo tutapigana na yu kabisa. Ngoma denied alleged reports that Uganda is also supporting the M23 rebels. Si awabidi kabisa wa semi maneno ya ubaguzi. Kiongozi ni mtu wanatia watu yote waishi pamoya. Kunaona kama nafika Uganda. Ha? Mzee Yorika kuta mzee. President anafanya kitu vizuri. Watu wanaishi vizuri sana. Mutoro, Lugwara, Muteso, watu yote wanaka fasi moya. Streets in Bunagana remain deserted, however, we managed to meet some women who are being sheltered at Kavumaga Primary School. They said that they failed to cross over to Uganda due to sounds of bullets. <laughs> Here, cattle keepers said that at night they cross to Uganda to sleep and in the morning they return to DRC to graze their animals. <laughs> Now, West Nile Regional Police Headquarters in Arua has handed over six Maracha district officials to the State House Anti Corruption Unit in Kampala on corruption allegations. The six are linked to mismanagement of 1.9 billion Ugandan shillings. The government of Uganda gave for construction of a Kololo uh, Public Seed Secondary School in Tara Sub County. On ground, it's visible that the 1.9 billion shillings that the government appropriated for the construction of Kololo Public High School has not been used for the right cause. Many classroom blocks are still at foundation level, laboratory and ICT blocks are unfinished, and the ceiling boards are non-existent, and most of the erected blocks are unpainted. To that effect, West Nile Regional Police Headquarters commenced the investigations after a tip-off by a whistleblower that later led to the arrest of the six officials. West Nile Police spokesperson Josephine Angusia said the six Maracha district officials were handed over to the anti-corruption unit in Kampala. Yeah, it is true that uh, 
six of the suspects who were arrested over the case of, uh, of abuse of office and uh, mismanagement of government funds, uh, which was meant to complete construction in a Kololo Seed Secondary School, were transferred to anti-corruption unit Kampala. Initially, they were arrested and detained at Tarua Regional Police Headquarters as the inquiries continued. And uh, those who were initially arrested were four. Later on, uh, they were issued police bond, but afterwards it was also decided that the bond should be cancelled and they were detained. She said many officials whose signatures have featured on the payment certificates are still at large. So yesterday when a team came from anti-corruption unit, they moved together with our police team to Maratha. They moved together with the scene of crime officers. They did the necessary examinations. There are other people who are still at large. Uh, they also had their signatures on the payment certificate in that failed uh, uh, project and so uh, they are needed. Then they will, we shall seek advice as to whether they should also be detained and uh, forwarded to anti-corruption unit or not. The 1.9 billion shillings was given to Maracha District local government by the central government in 2019 to complete construction of Kololo Public Seed Secondary School in a space of one year. According to police reports, the suspects claim that the funds were used up while other classroom blocks were still at foundation stages. I'm Navka Farida and Joseph Odama in Maracha. Now, in a bid to improve quality and productivity of agricultural produce, government has pledged to improve motor farms across the country. The Minister for Agriculture, Animal and Fisheries, Frank Tumwebeze, uh, made the revelation by flagging of firm tractors in Kamwenje and uh, Kitagwenda districts, respectively. Commercialization of agriculture is one of the strategies set by government to attain Vision 2040. Under this vision, every household is supposed to produce for both food and income. Government has set up model farms across the country for farmers to attain skills in the various farming activities. While flagging off farm tractors to the districts of Kamwengi and Chitagwenda, the Minister for Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Frank Tumwebaza, said government will improve all model farms in the country to enable the country attain Vision 2040. Improving them will involve expanding on the services, giving them more capacity to breed more and therefore enable the communities to, 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 to get the subsidized uh, uh, stock materials. <laughs> the moment that one is complete, uh, we hope areas like Toroko, areas like Teso and Sebe, where people have had poor breeds, both for milk and beef, that problem will be solved. The State Minister for Agriculture and Animal Industry, Colonel Bright Ramirama, called upon the people of Toro to embrace new technologies in agriculture, which will help them improve quality of their yields. We need to go to international markets. Our products must be competitive, must be of quality, must have the numbers, it must be sustainable. That's why we are now giving farmers equipment for value addition, for service handling and storage facilities. Provision of equipment was driven by demand from the various districts and local governments where items like tractors, mini dairy processing machines, coffee haulers, among others, were distributed. So depending on what each particular local government or district prioritized, that is what we are implementing in that particular local government. I would give an example of Chegegua, where we started from. Chegegua, they are maize growing people. So there they asked for a grain store, they asked for value addition equipment for the maize. So we constructed the store. We also provided a, a maize meal to add value to their maize. We also provided a feed meal. Some of the beneficiaries have pledged maximum utilization of the equipment. We do value addition on dairy products whereby we produce yogurt, we do produce cow ghee. It could be more better if we could get uh, 
more equipments to produce other products that are from Mirik. Because we have enough market. We have Congo. Congo is very big. Mary Namkose, Kamwenge District. Hunger Project, a non-government organization, has appealed to Wakiso local government to support the already established community development projects for sustainability. The appeal was made by the Hunger Project Regional Director, Dr. Daisy Owomugasho, uh, while handing over the Namayumba epicenter to the community after running the center for 10 years. The Namayumba epicenter handed over to the community of Namayumba by Hang Project comprises of a seed bank, health center, meeting hall, community bank, nursery bed, and a water processing project. Proud and is ready to be uh, self reliant. So from now on, all you need is to be vigilant and make sure that the epicenter property, the assets, are well kept and properly accounted for. Uh, in a transparent manner. Wakiso district leadership is expected to take responsibility of ensuring proper running of this center for the community's benefit. But it is something we need to work on to make sure that it is really fully functional and is supporting the communities as it was expected it to be. My second appeal also goes to Wakiso district local government. Eh? Most of these facilities also use electricity. The epicenter is situated on five acres of land, which was donated by Church of Uganda. The church has committed to continue supporting the center for sustainability. Epicenter, we have a clinic, so as a church, we are um, supporting whatever is going on, more particularly as Nami Nebe Diocese, because we gave in land so that this project can take place in this area. You know, this is a village, there are no banks, but we have a circle, we have a committee, they have a committee, they have a management team that manages the entire epicenter. The task of bank rolling the center now is under Wakiso district to ensure these organized groups survive for development. Whoever is in charge, ajakuntu kia tulabibu tia, the epicenter is now under the leadership of Nachiganda Lydia, who has highlighted challenges ahead after hunger project pull out. Through now, it is now said a reliance. We have to look for income generating activities. We have to hire the whole. We've been getting sitting allowances, uh, transport allowance from the mother non-government organization but now as a chairperson i'm um, thinking of the challenges you can call for the meeting they fail because they know very well that you are not having allowance and transport this is one of the 12 epicenters which hunger project has been operating for over 10 years and now handed over to the community for self-reliancy Abdul Nasir Lubwama, UBC News. We take a short break and return. of Kasozi, brought to you by Uganda Communications Commission. Hello? Hello? This is Kasozi. How can I help you? Hey, Kasozi, my brother.
brother. Long time. We last met when we were at campus. It's been a while, but you are the person I'm looking for. Campus? Really? Hey, hey, you don't remember me. Okay, so how can I help you? I'm stuck in Gulu making millions and I need to urgently send money to my sick mother. Mm -hmm. But I can't find any mobile money agent near me. I've sent the money to your phone as you can see the message. Eh? It might take a few minutes to come through, but I urgently need you to send the money to my mother. Let me send you her number and you send it to her chap chap. Ah, my friend. I'm afraid your mom is going to die. What? Because I don't know you, I never went to campus, and I'm also in Guru. So can we meet at CPS, we talk about it. Stay tuned for what Kasozi does next. Tofira, refrain from unnecessary engagement with strangers over the phone. This message is powered by the Uganda Communications Commission. The Kabaka Birthday Run 2022 is back on Sunday, 3rd July 2022 at Lubiri Mengo. This year, the run will be physical and will be flagged off by Sabasaja Kabaka at 7 a.m. Come out in large numbers once again to Lubiri Mengo. Run for a cause to fight and end HIV by 2030. Buy your ticket today at 15,000 Uganda shillings from Airtel Shops at Tobani Center, New Taxi Park, ShopRite Building, Benchwanka Street, Majestic Brands Office at Bulan. Mango. You can also buy your ticket using Airtel Money. Dial star 185 star 5 hash. Select Payments, select Kabaka Run and follow the prompts to complete the payment. Kabaka Birthday Run 2022 is brought to you by UNAID, CBS, BBS and Airtel, the smartphone network. Get the best entertainment for any budget. With GoTV, you will have great entertainment for as little as 13,000 Uganda shillings per month. GoTV, great stories. Zidiwano, GoTV Uganda. Love it. Princess! Is that a problem? Honey, relax. There'll be no more worries about SMSs, phone calls, Sujui data, because Daddy has got an Airtel smart plan. <laughs> There is even Airtel TV. <laughs> it means no worries. <laughs> Enjoy life worry-free with Airtel Smart Plan. Shareable among five people. Use every day and pay. Welcome back from that short break as we head over to Chegegua. Uh, government has pledged support to farmers who intend to carry out production on commercial scale. Uh, this pledge was delivered by Minister of Agriculture and Mall Industry and Fisheries, Frank Tumwebaze, during his handover of farming equipment that was worth 3.8 billion shillings in Chegegua district. Oh, in 2019, government through NADS initiated the agri-led program in the Renzori region, aimed at supporting communities with agriculture equipment. In fulfillment of this program, government has supported Chegegua and Chinjidua districts with six mill coolers, grain stores, maize mills and agriculture markets. During the handover of this equipment, the Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Frank Tomoebaze, stressed government support to farmers with intentions of carrying out agriculture on a large scale. So we must profile, identify, encourage and support big land owners who want to join production to be supported with the, 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 other, uh, the other high costs like machinery, like water, we shall support them. And we shall mainly target high value national crops that can be exported. Oil seeds, macadamia, even bananas on a large scale. The State Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Helen Adoa, attributed poor agricultural production to supply of poor quality farming materials. With the fingerlings, if you give a wrong seed, you have destroyed that farmer. No matter whether that farmer gives you the best feeds without good quality fingerlings or fries, it's gone. But also the, the, the other way around. If you get good fingerlings, the good quality fingerlings, and you give poor feeds, they will not be able to grow. 
the NAD Secretariat promised intervention in the matter. Planning as NAD Secretariat to go back and, uh, and establish the progress that farmers have made in as far as uh, the growth of the, uh, of the fish is concerned in terms of size and um, also understand what challenges they could be having so that we help them to improve on the performance of their project. Being a cattle keeping area, leaders say they still face challenges with water scarcity and disease which attack their animals. Uh, Milk coolers are not enough. Actually, we are producing a lot of milk and we still have the wastage. So we Mary Namkose, Chegegwa District. Now a little bit into the world of business. Car importers in Uganda have decried high taxes levied on cars imported, saying that the government policy on importation of second hand cars has greatly affected them. Mohammed Khan, spokesperson, Used Car Dealers Association, has said that currently cars would which would cost 30 million are now costing 60 million due to high taxes. Since because of Corona, in Japan, used cars, they have gone very high prices. So that's where we are counting from Japan prices plus in Uganda dollar rate has gone very high. So when we compare all those things, so car price is going very high right now. So that's why it is bringing, bringing some difficulties to sell car on cash basis. The taxes environment is uh, we facing a little bit high because the government URA is increased the years as compared to before we they allowed us 15 years. Eh? Now they're going to be coming to 13 years and then other is uh, on nine years. Eh? So when they increase two years, 15 to 13 years, eh? so we requested to URA, they have reduced tax also like that one. Eh? So if they reduce the tax like this one, which is 2015 uh, years old cars, uh, tax will become like 2013, uh, 13 years old car, then its price will be go to down a little bit and the Uganda people can be afforded, at, it, they will be affordable for them and then we can sell also. We have got a problem in business car right now because it is on and off. Uh, we have been importing old cars here like the two zero three four five six but right now the government has said these cars can't come in so they need at least now you the yeah you can bring now is two zero seven and even the math matters and two zero eight tax when the government reduced these gears they had to reduce the tax but they did not reduce tax remained that and then had cars had to go high Now scientists and plant researchers have demanded for an efficient agricultural seed system that is streamlined to build consistency and maintain the quality of agricultural seeds on the market. Let's hear more in this report. The director for research at NARO, Dr. Michael Gen, intimated that the country still grapples with a challenge of a proper seed system through which farmers and traders can access good seeds to enable them to realize their full production capacity. Dr. Ugen says this has affected production, caused food insecurity, and has threatened the food ecosystem in the country. Uh, we are also in the process of developing early maturing varieties. You can see the condition that we are going through. Uh, the weather seems to be disappointing us so much that what we are doing is to develop varieties with characteristics that can go through those, uh, those climatic changes that we are seeing also participating in regional trials, which is very important, you know, to have regional trials that cast across the whole of Africa, and that is what we are doing, and also emphasizing seed systems. Seed is very important, very, very important here, and a lot really needs to be done with the seed system to make sure whatever reaches the end users, the farmers, is really real seeds. So we have a lot to do in terms of seeds. 
Dr. Ugen says the country cannot entirely depend on the private sector to provide seeds to farmers for sustainable and resilient food chain. There has been a growing concern among farmers in the country over increasing cases of fake seeds on the market that has affected their production. During the session, lead researcher in the Peanut Innovation Lab, Dr. David Okelo Kalule, was proud to showcase some of the milestones realized in the lab, including creating a new breed of ground nuts in 2019 that is resilient to climatic changes, diseases, and produces high yields amidst the challenges. We were able to uh, get the ground nuts set representing the diversity all over Africa such that any other country which was not even part of us request for ground representing Africa, we should be able to give them that set. Two, we also had a very strong capacity building department. Um, we had uh, over 15 graduate students, Uganda alone had seven uh, graduate students, two PhDs and uh, five masters, of which five of them were ladies. We put strong emphasis on women and the next generation. Dr. Kelo says once fully introduced on the market, farmers would be able to realize their full production capacity, improving nutrition, address food chain challenges, but also increase their household incomes. During the field research, it was observed that farmers are severely challenged by lack of extension services, which have threatened them quite often out of production. In the five-year collaboration with the University of Georgia in the United States of America, the Institute has created a couple of new ground nut breeds alongside building a capacity for researchers and students with key buyers on ladies to levels of matters and PhDs for sustainability of the initiative. And so by training students, working with scientists and letting them conduct the research themselves with some help whenever necessary from, from our colleagues around the world makes that a much more sustainable model, model in the future where they now continue to do that good quality research and the farmers and the citizens of the country can reap the benefits of that research. Dr. Richard Miro from Makere University College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, the Implementing Institute applauded the collaboration with the University of Georgia in the initiative calling for concerted efforts from the Ministry of Agriculture to ensure that farmers benefit from such initiatives by accessing rightful facilities, technologies and seeds. Usually as research is being done, for example research in developing new groundnut seeds uh, that can grow within this changed climate environment, uh, we usually want to do that with students, so our senior professors and scientists involved uh, get to recruit students and these students are groomed in a research process to become the future scientists. The research also observed that the Ministry of Agriculture needs to address the challenges of data by aggregating data agricultural production to read and determine the different trends and responses to technologies and developments. And that brings us to the end of our, our weekend edition. My name is Patricia Lukoma Mpango. Very good afternoon to you.